Argentina is a fascinating country with a fascinating history. It's the eighth largest country in the world. It was home of the revolutionary Che Guevara and soccer great Lionel Messi. It was also the first country to use fingerprints to fight crime. But today I want to point out that Argentina has the largest consumption of red meat in the world. They like their beef, so they know how to dress it just right. And that's what inspires today's menu. Grilled flank steak sandwich, pickled red onions, garlic aioli, and a vine ripened tomato and fresh herb salad. It's a tango of taste. I'm Garrett Shack, and that's what we're cooking on the coast. In Argentina, they love their beef, but so do we here on the West Coast. On the menu today is grilled flank steak sandwich, pickled red onions, garlic aioli, and a vine ripened tomato with fresh herb salad. Let's get started. Okay, so there's a few things we need to do, and I might be thinking, well, it's a sandwich, I don't wanna go through all that trouble. Trust me, this will be worth it, okay? We've got a beautiful red onion right here. The key here, we wanna kind of quick pickle it. So we're gonna go nice and thin, we're starting on an angle, working our way up and around, kind of as thin as you can get it. Go. Okay. Beautiful colors. And we'll do the next one. Speed things up a little bit here. Hey, <laughs> we got onions flying everywhere. There we go. And into a glass bowl right here. Lovely. Let's see if I can collect the rest of the stuff that went flying on me. In it goes. Now, over in this pot over here on the stove, I've got some red wine vinegar going. I've got a bay leaf, a couple of bay leaves in there. We're gonna put some fresh thyme. Turn up the heat a little bit. Some fresh thyme, some sugar. I want that sugar to dissolve nicely in there. I'm not gonna add the whole thing. I'll give it a little taste. It's gonna be super tart because it's vinegary, obviously. And once that comes up to a boil, we'll add it to our red onions here and let them sort of cook. They're gonna kind of cook in that pickle, but then they'll start to soften as soon as it cools down. We'll get these beautiful, like, tart, tangy pickles. Okay, let's give it a little taste. Again, a little taste here. It is going to be this pure vinegar, right? So you know, don't take a deep breath over the fumes either, over the, over the steam. Oh, nice. Really nice and tart. That red wine vinegar, make sure you use a nice, good quality. Um, it gives a, a tartness to it, but then that sugar really helps with the sweetness. Okay. We're gonna go right over top of our onions here. We'll just pour that right in. You can see it's come up to a nice boil. In it goes. Right away, it's gonna start cooking those onions, softening them down. You wanna get everything in there. Perfect. There we go. Push them down a little bit. Okay, now these are gonna soften away. Let's get them into the fridge to cool down. Perfect. Tuck it away. Excellent. Now, next, onto our flank steak. We've got a beautiful cut of flank steak here from your local butcher. Flank's a really interesting piece of meat. It's got fibers, the meat structure, the fibers of it actually run kind of crisscross like this. So they go one way, then the other, and the other, and they actually, uh, they actually keep lots of flavor in them, but you have to cook them and cut them a certain way. One thing that helps with this process is tenderizing by marination. So we're gonna put it into a resealable bag here, fire that in, and now our marinade, we've got some Worcestershire sauce here, Lee and Perrins, we call it L&P in the restaurant, it makes it a lot easier to say. In it goes, excellent. We want a little bit of oil. Not too much, but just enough so it helps kind of bind everything together in there, stick it all in there. We want some fresh garlic, some peppercorns, and then I've got a dried serrano chili here. Peppercorns, a few. Garlic, you can just kind of mash it. Oh, firing them on the ground. Dogs will get that one later, don't worry about it. There we go. And then our chili, probably about half of that chili. We don't want to blow anybody's, uh, blow anybody's socks off. There we go, they can be quite spicy, especially when they're dried. Okay, into our bag. Et voila. Now, did you know that 28% of people that eat steak actually have it with a baked potato? Isn't that strange? Well, we're part of the other 72% here today. We're having it on a sandwich. Mix that up nicely. A little, a little shake there. And then this too is gonna go right into the fridge, okay? Now. Oh. 
trees. We've got lots of action on this show today, don't we? We're moving to the fridge. Now the fun part. We're going to make our very own mayonnaise. That's the garlic aioli that we talked about just a little bit ago. Okay? Some of the tools you need, I'm gonna show you how to do this one in kind of a blender type thing. So we're not making a smoothie here today, we're making an aioli. Aioli is like a French term for mayonnaise, basically. And like I've said to you before in this show, I don't want you going into the middle aisles and buying that, uh, that stuff out of a jar full of preservatives and all that jazz. We're making it fresh with fresh ingredients. Okay, we need an egg yolk. Lovely, you don't have to be too careful if some of the white gets in there, it's not a big deal. I'm not gonna sweat about that too much. We need an egg yolk, we need some fresh garlic because it won't be a garlic aioli without garlic, all right? There we go. I'm just gonna chop it up a little bit as we fire it in here, just to help the blades work a bit. Okay, and a little bit of vinegar. There we are. Now, it's gonna take a bit of process here because this, we need to create the emulsion. And if you remember from shows past, creating an emulsion actually is slowly combining oil with the, uh, with the fat of the egg yolk, right? So we have to find a way to do this slowly in this fancy little machine. So we're just going to add a little bit of oil at a time and then blitz it again. I know it's a process, but if you don't have one of those magic boat motors and all you have at your disposal is this fancy machine, it's not gonna stop us from making our very own mayonnaise. Another look here. Oh, it's coming around. And slowly, little bits at a time, really giving it a good blast when it gets in there. You should start to hear it change as it thickens up, as it emulsifies. You start to hear that change in, uh, change in texture and sound in the motor here. Okay, let's have a look at this. Nice, it's getting nice and thick. Oh, Mike, can you see that one? Yeah, there you go. Coming up nice and thick. There we go, that's what we're looking for. Let's give it a little taste. Need some salt. Perfect at this stage, a little salt. There we go. And I want to add a little bit of lemon juice here. I just want to brighten up the flavors a little bit. Make sure there's no seeds in there. A few squeezes. And then a little more oil. And we'll get this back on the blender here for one more go. Okay. Give it a couple seconds. Awesome, and I think our aioli is all set. Let me just tuck this one over here, and I'll scoop that all out. All right, hey -o for the mayo, there we go. See how simple that was? It's delicious, and you know what exactly what went in there. That's what we're trying to show you here on this show, okay? so. We'll be back later in the show to pull together our grilled flank steak sandwich, pickled red onion, garlic aioli, and vine ripened tomato and fresh herb salad. But first, following the break, we're gonna get out of the kitchen. You'll wanna stick around for that. to Victoria's Fisherman's Wharf to look at some boats, check out the scenery, but not today. We're here for some really unique and super cool modern cuisine. Hi Sabrina, thanks for inviting us down here today. Thanks really great to coming. be here. Yes. Now you've got quite a unique place here. Not only is it unique in color, but you live upstairs mm -hmm. and you do some pretty neat food. So can you explain to me a little bit how you came about that? Yes, well I came to Victoria for vacation and I saw this house for sale and the possibilities and yeah. sushi just came up and because there's no sushi around and the, fi the fish coming right from the dock. So you love sushi, but do, this yeah. isn't just like, we're not gonna get like just a normal maki roll here, are we? No, you're not. <laughs> so we're gonna get some different flavors like a coconut curry and a Thai, sweet Thai spice. Do a lot of different fusion. We have goat's cheese on our roll, so it's pretty different. Cool, yeah. I love it, I love it, I love it. Can we get in there and uh, start cooking something up? Let's do it. Cool, let's go, <laughs> show me the way. All right, Sabrina, so we're inside now and this place looks fantastic. I think you've done a really great job. So this this is where all the magic happens, I guess. How do you start? How do you get started? Uh, first, I wear gloves yeah. because it's more efficient. I will put something greasy on the gloves, like avocado or butter. Ah, that's and a neat little I'll trick. Did you go. guys see that? We put a little <laughs> avocado on our gloves there so the rice doesn't stick. Yeah, and then I'll grab a little ball of rice. 
I will go down to the seaweed. Then I'll spread the rice. So I'm, I'm assuming you're not uh, you're not Japanese. Where, what background are you from? What's your background? I'm from Brazil, and uh, we have the largest Japanese colony in the world like, of immigrants. Oh wow! Well, okay. Yeah. So we have a big influence of Japanese cuisine oh, over there. Yeah. yeah. Learn something new every day. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. What we're doing here, we are um, a salmon. We're gonna bake the salmon. It's a beautiful sockeye. So okay. we're gonna bake that in the oven. So it's not just raw, like because most people think that sushi is just raw, right? Yes, absolutely. No, we uh, we have a lot of cooked rolls here too, and warm rolls. Oh, nice. Uh, so very different. We have a little bit of goat cheese, asparagus. and then we have a little asparagus here, and then we have um, this little crispy treat, which which is also Brazilian. Oh, um, interesting. We call straw, straw potatoes, which we we fry it uh, really thinly. Very nice. Yeah, so yeah. it adds a little bit of crunch and a little texture to the sushi roll as well. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And uh, we use that on stroganoff in Brazil and oh, nice. hot dogs. Cool. We use this on a lot of things for that crunch. Brazilians love the crunch. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And so the, it has a unique name. Where did you come up with the name for this uh, for this floating sushi shack? I guess. Right. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. So um, I was up there and I was watching before about the house and I was. Okay. Trying to come up with a name, and I saw the houses all moving around. Yeah. And I thought, you know, it's rocking and we'll be rolling. I, I was kind of hesitant <laughs> because there's so many sushi places called rock and roll, but yeah, I'm yeah. like, no, this actually is, is great for Yeah, you really are. Place. Rocking <laughs> and rolling. <laughs> and rolling. Yeah. Very cool. So we don't want that to be too cooked. I just. Yeah. Just like any salmon, I like it to be a little bit on the undercooked side. Oh, very nice. So we're gonna put that nice in there. Nice and moist too, that mm -hmm. lime juice. Yes. I, I love citric flavors. Now here's the here's the fun part, hey? How do you yeah. keep it all in there? I just I push it with my fingers nice. a little bit to make sure everything is nice and in there. Oh, you've made a few of these, hey? Yes, probably a few thousand. <laughs> <laughs> and then to hold the fish up, we're gonna put a little saran wrap, and then we grab a little. Um, Sudare, which is this little guy with no plastic sudare. Sudare? Yeah, sudare. Very cool. And then we'll make it nice and tight. Yep. And then we're gonna cut it. We're gonna wet it a little bit. Oh, nice sharp knife. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. That's a sharp knife for sure. Cut through there like, like butter, no problem. You need a sharp knife with sushi all the time. Absolutely. <laughs> And that's a good trick too, just to get it a little bit damp, right? So that uh, the yes. rice doesn't stick, so it cuts through the rice nicely. Exactly. Ah, look at that. And then we're gonna get our miso jalapeno aioli from here. Oh, here comes that ethnicity again, hey? I'm throwing some different flavors in there. Yes. Miso jalapeno aioli. aioli. And I'll put it around. So a little bit spicy and lots of flavor in there. Yeah. And then I'm gonna grab the torch and the charcoal. Now what is this here? It's a booty style. Okay. That they call. Yeah. So you're torching over the charcoal to give a little caram caramelization, a smoky taste to the fish. Interesting. Wow, it has a really unique smell. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. I've never seen that before, Sabrina. That's fantastic. Where did you learn this technique? Going to different Japanese restaurants. <laughs> yes. Very cool. And then um, this is the Alaskan roll. And that's it, the Alaskan roll. <laughs> yep. The Alaskan roll, can I have a bite? Of course. <laughs> oh, look at that one. Some nice char on it. Mm-hmm. Got the crispy potatoes in there and salmon. Mmm. Wow. The textures are all there, the rice is perfect. Thank you. You must have worked on your rice quite a bit, did you? Yes, mm. I did. Because it just falls <laughs> apart in your mouth nicely. Yeah. Mm. And that charcoal gives a really incredible flavor. Thank you. That is really neat. Thank you so much, Sabrina. This is Thank fantastic. Thank you, yeah. Should we make another one for uh, for somebody else here? Because I'm probably going to eat all this one. Yeah, sure. <laughs> this is delicious. Thank we you. We can make another one. <laughs> mm. It's back to our kitchen where we're working on our grilled flank steak sandwich, pickled red onions, garlic aioli, and a vine ripened tomato and fresh herb salad. If you remember, we put our flank steak in the fridge. It's sitting in there marinating. So let's grab our flank steak and our pickled red onions at the same time here. All right, now these red onions, I'm gonna set them right here. And you see that? They've had a great chance to sort of dilute a little bit of the color, but because we use red wine vinegar, they still had that really beautiful red, but you can see that they've wilted down. So 
nice and cool now. They've wilted down, so they're kind of soft, but still have a bit of crunch. Hmm. Lovely sweetness from those red onions, but then that tart sort of flavor from that red, red, red wine vinegar. Okay, flank steak's been marinating. You can take this bad boy out of here, and we'll get it onto our grill pan. Here we go. Nice. Beauty. Okay. Here, our camera guy salivating over there. He just loves steak. There we go. Right away, you can smell the caramelizing of some, some of the sugars that were in there from the, uh, from the Lee and Perrins or that Worcestershire sauce, the garlic, the onions. Smells great. Let's put some fresh cracked pepper on there. And now, really important couple of things here. We never use a fork when we're picking up our steak. We always use tongs. If you pierce it with a fork, you start releasing juices, flavor comes pouring out, last thing you want. The other thing is too, make sure you let it do its, do its job, let it cook. We want that pan to start caramelizing flavors in there, so don't sit here kind of fiddling, checking it every three seconds, let it cook, okay? And now let's turn our attention to a delicious salad that's gonna go super nicely with this sandwich. We got some beautiful vine ripened tomatoes here. Look at that. Smells delicious, gorgeous red. They've got that deep red color. These have definitely been sitting on the vine for long enough now. And you know what's really cool? If you're making a tomato sauce, put the vine right in that tomato sauce. It's really neat. It, that's where a ton of that smell comes from. Like when you walk into a greenhouse, it smells so good, I love it. Okay, let's cut these up here. Look at that, just gorgeous. Nice and juicy. Nice big chunks. This is kind of like a, you know, definitely a nice big chunky salad. All right, get those into our bowl. And it goes. Next, we want some fresh herbs, and we got a whack of them over here. Let's pull this over. Got some lovely basil. Basil and tomatoes go hand in hand without question. There we go. Got some chives, some oregano. Let's see what else we got here. We just want a whack of fresh herbs. You could go right to your garden and actually just take whatever you wanted out of there. Now we're just going to chop that really rough. Nice rough chop. There we go. And then into our salad here. Give it a good little toss. Okay, now we want to dress it a little bit. Olive oil, good quality olive oil for sure. A couple of good tablespoons there. Lots of nice salt. You use a really great sea salt if you can find it. Cracks pepper. And before I add the vinegar, let's have a look at our steak here, okay? I can start to smell it. I sort of can tell that there's some caramelized ice going on in there. Let's flip it over and see how we're looking. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> stand back, you guys, stand back. We got the pepper in there. Let's get a little bit of balsamic. Beautiful. Tomatoes, fresh herbs, salt, balsamic, pepper. Yeah, how do you get better than that? Now, let's set that just aside and turn our attention to the bread. Okay, we got lovely baguette here. Open it right up. Okay, remember our garlic aioli? Look at the color on that. Sure hope you can see that at home, because boy, it's beautiful. It's kind of got this golden color from those lovely fresh eggs we were using. Good slathering of that on there. Fresh arugula. Let me tell you, fresh arugula is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite leafy green vegetables. Pack it full in there, looks great. Some of our red onions, I'll use my tongs here to grab some of those pickled red onions. They look great, wilted down a little bit, but still have some snap to them. Pack that right in there. Whew, look at those colors. Vibrant green from the arugula. Arugula is going to add this really lovely pepperiness to it. Fantastic. And then let's check our steak. So we're going to give it a little poke. Mm. Oh, man, that's good. I love grilled flank steak. Flank, as I was mentioning before, really interesting muscle structure in it. Uh, so we have to make sure that we cut it a certain way as well, which is very important. Important not to overcook it. We definitely don't want uh, this to be well done. You want it sort of medium rare to medium, okay? Let's have, let's have a look and see how we did. Okay. Lovely grill marks on there. You definitely want to let this rest a little bit, but uh, today, in the interest of television, we're going to slice it right away and get it right on our sandwich. See how I've cut it on the angle like that? I don't know if you can see that out there in television land. Lindsay, you get a good shot of that? Because that looks fantastic right there. Just a nice medium rare. Okay, we're cutting it on the angle. Looks beautiful, smells incredible. Now this, this size of steak here would probably do a couple of sandwiches anyway. We're going to take a couple of nice pieces and just lay them in the bread here. Look at that. Find another couple of nice ones here. Beautiful. We are going to put it right there on that big board. So it's nicely pre presented. There we go. A little bit of our salad. 
Get your nice big spoon here. Start plunk some of this out right in the middle of the board. Man, if you could smell this, the fresh tomatoes, that balsamic, all those fresh herbs, just amazing. Well, there you have it. Grilled flank steak sandwich, pickled red onions, garlic aioli, and vine ripened tomato and fresh herb salad. Can't wait to dig into this. Now what better way to tuck into a delicious sandwich than with a big bold glass of wine. With me today from Liquor Planet is Bill. How you doing Bill? Good, good. Hey, thanks for being on the show. Yeah. Yeah. So what have you brought? What do you think is going to work with this uh, with this beefy sandwich we got here? Well you've got lots and lots of flavor going on there mm -hmm. in the sandwich and the, and the salad. So I got a big bold and beautiful Zinfandel from British Columbia. Nice. That's just how I like my wines. Perfect. Great. So uh, let's give it a whirl. Okay. Again, what can you tell me about the, uh, about the winery? Well it comes from uh, Kettle Valley Winery out, oh, of nice. Nar out of Naramata. Yeah. And this is called Great Northern Zinfandel. Very cool. Mm -hmm. And Zinfandel is pretty unique to uh, to BC, right? It like, is. I mean, we don't really see too many of these grown in a lot uh, of northern, grown. northern California, Am Amador Ooh. County. But this is very similar to the, the California. It smells fantastic. I can't wait to taste it. Mmm. Wow. I'm very well, I'm impressed. I mean, the Similkameen Valley gets that kind of longer growing season, right? Because it's so arid and so on, right? It does, and that's what Zin loves. Yeah, absolutely. All right, loves let's, the heat. Well, let's see. So, so does this sandwich. So let's okay. uh, let's tuck in here. Mm. <laughs> mm. Doesn't like having a bite of sandwich on television, hey, bud? Good old. <laughs> mm. Fantastic sandwich. A little bit of garlic from the aioli, but that mm. beefy flavor. Mm. And it seems to pair well with your your uh, caramelization of the steak also. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think you knocked it out of the park here. I'm That's very, fantastic. I'm very high in alcohol, but you don't taste the alcohol because it's so rich in the fruit. Yeah, it doesn't have the heat of alcohol at all. Yeah, black cherries, blackberries. Wow, great wine, great sandwich, great Fantastic pairing, sandwich. great company. Thank but you. where do I find this wine? Well, you can find it uh, where I, I work, and that's the famous Liquor Planet. And, uh, nice. Yeah. Largest liquor store in British Columbia, right? It is. Private liquor store in British Columbia. 15,000 square feet. That's yeah. massive. Sounds like my kind of place. I'd love to get trapped in there. It's lots of fun, too. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> Check out our website. We'll find more information on today's show and maybe a few surprises. I'm Garrett Shack. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to savor the flavor. All right. Great choice, Bill. Oh, you really, 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 really,